Okay, sorry about that, guys and girls. I'm having iPad trouble. Thanks for your patience. Um, I'm sorry I'm splitting the second chapter into two parts, but uh, please bear with me. So Omachias and Angeline spent what seemed like an endless time plucking the birds, cleaning them, scorching the pen feathers, those just growing in, too tiny to pull off. When the birds were ready to toast, Mama packed them close together with, along with wild onion bulbs and pressed, then pressed rich stream bed muck carefully around them. She set them in a pit in the middle of the fire and heaped live coals around the bald mud, the bald mound of mud. As the birds cooked, bits of steam broke through tiny cracks in the mud and scented the air with a delicious fragrance. A few ears of ripe new corn, blueberries, and a strong tea of wintergreen made the rest of the feast. When the birds were done, Mama used a stick to roll the ball of birds from the fire. And then she cracked open the baked mud. Sitting down together with, along, around the fire, they ate roasted ears of corn, sweet blueberries, and picked the delicate meat off of the tiny bird bones. Each bird was no more than a few mouthfuls, hot, tasty, and spiced with the oniony brown flavor. There was more than enough to fill each person, and they were all satisfied. These are my daughters, said Day Day proudly. Not only did they save the corn today, but they caught and plucked our dinner. They are hunters. He took his pipe from his bag to smoke it in their honor, and each girl felt a warm, proud sensation. They leaned back a little, looking into the fire, and the Comus also took out her woman's pipe. She filled the bowl with kinnikinick, tamped her pipe carefully, and lit it with a glowing stick. Well, Micaias wanted to ask her for a, for a story, but she knew that Nokomis always refused, no matter how hard they begged, until the last frog was safely sleeping in the ground. Day Day, with his half-white blood, could often be persuaded because the stories he told were different from Nokomis's. Hers were Atasokian, Atasokian stories, meant only for winter. Dede usually talked about his travels, the places he'd seen, and the people. The close calls and the momentous encounters with animals, weather, another, and, a, and animals, weather, another Anishinaabe, and best of all, ghosts. After he smoked his pipe, at Angeline's request, Dede spoke. This is his ghost story, Dede's ghost story. Pay attention to this, please. It's usually these ghost stories are meant to teach people about something. See if you can figure out what the story is trying to teach the kids. So we were coming out of the rapids about two days from boating. Boating. In a part of the river I knew all too well. When I tasted a storm, the last thing I wanted... Right about then was a storm. I wanted to get my men and our canoe past that spit of land. It's shaped like a little hook and juts out into the river. The name of that place is called Where the Sisters Eat. wanted to get past it because we were hoping to catch up with a certain trader and sell to him. Besides, as I heard it, nobody liked to camp there at where the sisters eat. Strange things happen at that place. Still, when the sky opened and the rain poured down, I decided that my fears were foolish. As much as my mom Correction, much as my men wanted to go on, 
I decided we had no choice. They grumbled, but we pulled in, into shore, dragged our canoes up to the drier ground under the pine trees. By then, the rain was driving down hard. The wind was shaking the trees. There was no question of making a fire. We had just, we just had to wait it out in the cold, in the dark. So I heaped pine needles and soft branches in a bed, rolled myself underneath the canoe in my blanket. So far, everything was fine, I thought. Maybe the stories I had heard about the place were lies, things that never happened. I turned over to try and get a little sleep. I had barely dozed off when a sudden shaft of lightning hit near a near, struck a tree that crashed down in the woods. All I could do was hope I had chosen a lucky spot where lightning wouldn't strike, where no tree would topple down. I could have taken my tobacco out right then and offered it up to the good spirits. I should have remembered my mother's ways, but I did not. And here is what happened after I fell asleep again. The next time I woke, I came awake with a jolt. Uneasy. Too quiet. That's the first thought I had. Too quiet. No wind, no rain, no moonlight either. The clouds hung thick and heavy as a priest's black wool robe. I waved my hand in front of my face. I couldn't see even the barest outline. That's how dark it was. That's when I heard them. I heard the women arguing over bones. There were, of course, no living women within hundreds of miles, but I was groggy and didn't think of that. All I could think of was, was all I could think of was how loud these women were talking. Hey, you ladies, be quiet. Someone's trying to sleep here, I called. For a little while, they lowered their voices, and then the argument broke out again, and they started to shout. They had settled down to quarrel near my canoe, and I was now steaming mad. Be can, I yelled at them loud and harsh to be quiet. Again, they lowered their voices, but just as soon as I got comfortable again and started to doze, they broke into a loud chatter once more. It wasn't that they sounded ugly. Their voices were high and sweet, though they were having a disagreement. It was just that they were so loud and right over my head, sitting on the canoe. I heard their weight creak on the spruce ribs. Suggested here. You be careful out there. I was getting even angrier. They took no notice of me, just continued their excited disagreement. Here's what they said. You give me the first meal, sister. You take the first bone. Now give me the second meal. You take the first bone. I'll have the foot. Well, I'll have the head. No, you won't. I'll have the head and the leg, too, sister. Well, how shall we divide the others? Well, let's gamble for them. Well, let's. It's a good thing we raised that storm, said one of the sisters, laughing. How else will we catch our food so easily? My stomach hurts, was the answer. It's been a long time since we caught this many. Then all of a sudden I understood I was the first meat. The second bone. The men, we men, were the food. The ghostly sisters had come to hold their feast. Us! My sweat turned cold. I remembered all too well how bothersome bad spirits were, even dangerous. These ones had perhaps starved to death. 
and were and were eternally hungry. They themselves had revealed how they struck up storms to force travelers to seek shelter. No wonder my men didn't want to camp out on the spit of land called where the sisters eat. Day Day fell silent, then stared into the fire at the center of the Wakigam. Nobody said a word. Here's what I found. Nobody said a word. Even baby Niwu seemed to listen, horrified as Day Day thought about his next move. How he would save himself from the cannibal ghosts. Day Day finally went on. Well, here's what I did. Luckily, I thought of my father's advice. Never let fear take your mind away, he said. Always think. So instead of giving in to fear, I put fear aside and thought, into my mind once I let myself hear it, a plan came. Immediately I put it into action. Bam, bam, I began to knock on the inside of my canoe. I huffed like a bear and shouted in a growly voice. Wasn't he delicious, this man? Best one I ever ate. Well, did you hear that, said the sister above me. A bear has eaten some of our precious food. How dare the bear steal from us? They were both furious. And to make them more furious yet, I stuck the butt of my rifle out and whacked one of their feet hard. Ow! Ow! She cried, why did you hurt me, my older sister? Why well, didn't, said the older. Did too, shrieked the younger. You and that bear, always lying and greedy. Me and the bear, nothing. Take that. Wow. Day Day gave a horrified shriek that made the skin on Omakaius's neck crawl. Heart jolt, scalp tighten with fear. She struggled, correction, snuggled deeper into the blankets and robes next to Grandma, who held her tight. Oh! Again, Dede gave his version of the ghostly shriek. Big Pinch covered his head and crashed into Mama's lap. Dede let a silence fall and then told the ending in a hushed, spooky tone. The two sisters began to hit at each other, first with their fists, and then with sticks, then with rocks pulled from the ground. While they were occupied with trying to kill each other, I loaded my canoe quick as I could, as quick as could be. I could hear the others doing the same, no doubt listening to the sisters' plan to eat us. The men had been shaking in their blankets. Just as we were pushing off, one of the sisters noticed us leaving and with a scream, she bounded toward us. I was the last one out, steering from behind. I shouted to my men, Paddle, men! Paddle hard! Still, the evil sister managed to grab my shirt and rip it almost to shreds. Just see. Day Day solemnly produced the pieces of shirt that his daughters had used to frighten off the birds that day. Big Pinch gasped, and the girls were silent. Yes, said Day Day. It was lucky I got out of there alive. And do you know, after I hit the ghost with my gun barrel, the gun split on me. Refused to let me fix it. Fortunately, we did catch up with that traitor who always made such a good price for, to us. And luckily, too, Day Day drew out the last word teasingly, which made the girl's ears peak with interest, perk with interest. Luckily, I was able to trade for a few small things. Day Day drew a little cloth-wrapped package from inside his shirt. He opened the package with such care that Omakaya thought he might have brought back a live thing. Perhaps... even a small squirrel, or maybe, she 
she momentarily recalled the tiny bird in her carrying sack. It was even, was it even still in the corner? Probably it was quite dead by now. Omakai's felt a pang. She focused again on Day Day's gift. He loved giving gifts, drawing out the suspense, and he always chose wonderful things. And this time he drew from his small sack a long, thick band of indigo ribbon for Angeline. For Mama, a precious dress length of calico cloth, deep red with blue and pink flower sprigs all over it. For Grandma, tobacco, a big twist of it, golden brown. Big Pinch received a small knife and baby Niwu, one tiny piece of velvet to lay against his soft cheek. As for Omakaius, something special was in store, said Dede, something he had made himself. She caught her breath. Nah, he said. Here, this is for you. He handed her the sawed-off length of his gun. Sawed-off length of his gun barrel the one that ruined itself after he struck the ghost's sister's feet. The end of the gun barrel was pinched together with tongs and given a rough, sharp edge. It was clearly, Omakaius gulped to see it, a hide scraper. When Mama showed me what a good job you'd done on that moose hide for my moccasins, said Day Day, I decided you should have my old gun barrel for your first, for your own first scraping tool. Woohoo! The skins you prepared for my moccasins are very fine. From now on, I want you to prepare skins often for Mama and for me. Take this, he said. Omakaius was confused. Pride fought with dismay inside of her, and she took the gun barrel hide flesher from her father with a conflicted heart, preparing hides her most hated work. And now, just because she had done a good job one time, she was picked out, special for the rest of her life. She would be condemned to soften Soften, tan, work with stinking hides. No, she wanted to say, I won't take it. I want a ribbon like Angeline's, only red maybe, or yellow. Cloth, please, a bit of sweetness. A licorice stub, anything, anything else at all. But she took Dede's gift with a tender thanks, knowing how much he delighted in choosing the presents and how rarely he praised Almost resentfully, she looked over at Day Day's new moccasins, sounded her correction surrounded and held by Mama's moccasins. They looked fresh, neat, new. Omakaius had to admit the hide she had tanned was beautiful. Suddenly, her heart thumped. Her throat shut. Oh, uh, Day Day's moccasin. Oh, she was sure she saw it move. It had moved. She was sure of it again. Neshki, her voice trembled. She pointed. The others looked. This time, the moccasin took a big hop forward. And everyone, even Day Day, cried out in surprise. They were all frozen in shock. The moccasin sat still. Correction sat quiet, still. And Comus leaned over, poked at it with a stick. The moccasin twitched, then squawked. Omakaius jumped up, for she remembered instantly that she had left her carrying sack right next to the door with the moccasins. Sure enough, her bird popped its head out bright, and in the sound of everyone's laughter, it blinked with interest. Cheerful, greedy, hungry unafraid. Well, that's the end of our first season. Okay. That went fast. That's the end of summer. Now we're going to start fall. Thank you. We'll see you on the, in the fall.